Okay guys, today I'm here to take us through probably one of the, one of the most fantastic live streaming platforms that I have ever come across and this is simply called the VMix. You probably would have heard of it but um, I have not tried it yet. If you've tried it, you're probably not too good with it. I'm just going to try to introduce us to it and it more, there's going to be more series following this particular video to take us through some of the fantastic um, abilities of this great software. So the VMix software is a software that is produced by um, a gentleman called Martin who lives in Australia and I will take you through to the site briefly to have a look at it and I recommend anybody who is serious into video productions and video streaming to consider having one of these um, products because it's really really that good and it will do you a lot of good if you want to do serious video streaming so vmix.com.au is the software and this that is the website they have various packages of the videos but i'm going to talk mainly about the very first product they ever they produced or he ever produced now he's produced a lot of other very fantastic ones as well unbelievable work that he's doing there all right so over here basically we know what to do you go to the download page and it gives you the link to download is purely a Windows program. He hasn't done any for a Mac program yet, and there doesn't seem to be any plan to do so yet. But uh, we hope he will. But the Windows one is extremely good. The beauty here is that free 60 day trial. I mean, how about that? Have you ever heard anything like that for a 60 day trial? Some give one week trial, some give two weeks trial. The most general to come across is a monthly trial. This man gives two months of free trial within which you will fully get used to the vmix system i've had vmix and it was vmix 12 nice and vmix 15. all right so a lot of things have gone in there and here are some of the few things you can see that is listed here or if you go into the features page you're going to see what you can do you um, have a variety of inputs think of any media input that you would like to bring in into your video streaming vmix can let you do it they have a lot of transition effects some of the all the basic transition effects you know out there the fade the cut the wipe the zoom the fly the whatever um, they're all in there and then we can record and then obviously you can stream to external sources and all other features you have virtual sets inbuilt as well if you want to use it and they have a desktop grabbing feature as well that you can use to grab desktop so that we use it now really to do this recording then obviously you have the built-in title templates as you can see here because it's for live streaming so definitely you will need your lower thirds so your lower thirds are also available a lot of them uh, built in there for you to use and a lot of fantastic fantastic features that will take time to go through as time goes so i love this one as well it is a web interface so you can easily control uh, your transitions even from another computer or from your ipad or your smartphone uh, tablets anywhere at all that it can connect to on the web you could do that now if you need to buy it that's one of the greatest features of this product you can get it for free completely free but that is for the very basic use of it and the maximum resolution you get is 768 by 576 this is really cool if all you do is to produce for like you know youtube and uh, vimeo and those kind of platforms it is cool it's free and you can use it for anything you need to use it for if you want to produce a similar thing but for a higher end resolution then only 60 quid can you imagine 60 dollars is all you pay to get this fantastic product it's unbelievably cheap and move up a bit more to gain a few more things like the video uh, listing which is really good if you are into as i said video streaming and you're kind of operating your own small video station video listings are extremely good because you can use video listing to program a whole list of videos to run for 24 hours and we we'll just be streaming one after the other and it's a beautiful one there so that is also available and look at that 
the moment you go to the SD, the SD package, it's a uh, not HD yet. The basic, the basic HD you get that the 1080, but this is the upgrade of this basic to SD, and it gives you a thousand inputs, a thousand capture inputs. Can you imagine? I mean, what are you going to do with a thousand inputs? If you have a thousand cameras, you can connect all of them to your system. If you can handle it, that's what basically it's saying. You can have a thousand things input ready for your program, and the software can handle it, provided your machine can handle it. It's unbelievable. It's mind blowing. And have all you need. You have four overlay channels. You have your recording. You have your streaming. You have a full screen output and external output and everything in there is a beauty to use. This is the one I use, the HD. Right, so it gives me all the thousand inputs, it allows me to broadcast at 1920 1080. Have all the inputs that I need overlays and have everything all the way down to video list multi coder, instant replay, external exports. I've used them before when they trialed them, but they didn't necessarily buy them because I don't need them now. But if I do need them, I would definitely buy them. Imagine having all of this for only 350 US dollars. This is about it's, it's, it's more than one third, as a matter of fact, I think it's about one third, even not a quarter of the nearest rival to this, even though that one will not give you anything like these features. Because if you set the market right, I'm not going to mention any, but if you set the market right now and you look for other platforms of live streaming uh, software that you can use to mix and bring in multiple inputs as these ones give you and all these features, $350. It's a bargain. It's a freebie. It's a giveaway. And so nobody can look at this one and turn away that it's good for anything else. It is a fantastic product. All right. Then, obviously, if you are into 4K production, which I'm not into, that is why I haven't bought it yet. I don't have any platform that I deliver 4K to. If you're into 4K production, then this or that could be your package. And it comes with fantastic things. As I said, you have the multi-coder. multi, multi that means that you can record all the cameras coming in individually. Once at the same time you mix and you send. Obviously this will demand a lot of resource from your computer. So you must have the computer that can handle that kind of demand. Instant replay from one camera if you're on the 4K Pro. If you have four cameras, you all know what instant replay can do for you if your video works. Then also two external outputs, which is fantastic. I have one external output here, that's all I need and that's what I use. And it works perfectly well for me. So with my external output, I do live streaming almost every week onto YouTube channel and onto my live stream channel as well. I have about three or four channels out there. And I can multiple, I can send multiple outputs even with just one external output to all these platforms at the same time. And that's how versatile this system is. Even though I have only one external output, it feels as if I have three or four external outputs. But the moment I set my external output, all these other platforms easily pick up the my the platform that transmits onto my live stream easily picks up the feed. The one that goes into YouTube through the FMLE also easily picks up the feed and it distributes them to all these platforms for me straight away. It's a fantastic tool and I really, really love it. It also instantly identifies and sees my external monitor. To the moment I, I set it up and I open it straight away, the external monitor is also activated so that you can see all that is going on. Um, on in the program side on the external monitor so this is really really good and i cannot recommend it enough and if you are a church group you could even get it for free that's how generous he is and i don't know who this guy is i don't know who, who, what kind of spirit is made up of but he's extremely good he's i mean he's as good as next to jesus himself look at that offering this for free for churches to use all right then if you come here you have the various packages that he also have for sale for the virtual sets there are about five or six of them that comes already installed in the one that you're going to buy it's a free one then you can have more to buy then if you need more lower sets there are also a variety here that you can buy them as well and even this package this total package is also extremely cheap to buy 36 templates in all and it comes for only 45 dollars I don't know what else you can ask for. So that is how basically um, VM is. is. Now I'm going to go into the software itself. Once you buy and you download, and uh, well, first of course you go for the free one. 
which if you system data triad, you download it, you will install it. Very easy to install. It doesn't use much of your processing power as well. That's one good thing about Vmix. It uses very little processing power. So once you've done so, you're going to find yourself with this icon. All right, that is the icon there. It's a kind of a graded icon of blue, green, and yellow. Now, once you open that icon, you're going to have something like this. All right, where this part here is your preview and that is your program so this program here is the one that is sending out your feed whatever is going out to your viewers is what you are seeing here then over here will be your input phase so every input you do so this you can see here written desktop capture desktop capture because that is where uh, the first one here is desktop capture because that is where I am inputting my desktop the first input is desktop capture so that's where it is my next input obviously is my mic and that is why it's a second input as i said you can put any media input at all into the system you see this color code in here at the extreme left end of the input session the red green is it orange or yellow no good those colors they have the purple and the light blue and the deep blue all right so these uh, inputs as you see here are also for organizing your input so assuming you have open 10 15 inputs there's so many of them then it's difficult to toggle between them you can use these colors to organize them some of the inputs you, you might use them only for design purposes but not going to keep using them just bring them in only one but they need to remain open you can capture all those design purposes ones and just put them under one um, group of coloring and that will help you to remove them off here and if you need to go just to them the moment you click on that particular color it will come up and i might um, introduce that as we go on the series of videos you see when i'll do something similar and i'll show how these things work. but it's very straightforward you can try it and you see how it works so first things first let's go over the whole setup here and let's see how it works so first you have in the extreme top left corner i will call the open preset well a preset means that um, you are able to save your setup so once you come in and you set up for a particular purpose and you know you'll be using that particular setup again and again and again it gives you the option to save preset so once you save it you can always just go straight open up and it automatically opens the setup for you all right so if you come in here and you go to my preset you realize i have so many of the setups because I, I produce for different platforms different functions different clients different people and so almost anybody I use it for who are a repeat customer or client, I will have to save their preset when they come in. The moment I click it, it opens. So all these are presets basically. And know that you can use one preset at a time, obviously. So if I should make a mistake right now and click on any of these presets, it's going to cancel this recording. It's going to open that one. So I have to make sure I don't click any. But that is what a preset is. And you use this in saving it. If you want to go back quickly to a previously used preset, the last preset you use, the moment you click last preset, it will open that one for you and off you go. Close preset is obvious. So that is what we have there. Full screen is what you use to um, toggle your external monitor or even if you have this one, the main monitor. All right, so if I click it on or off, is going to show on my second monitor as to whether this particular aspect of it is showing there or not so full screen simply means that look, it, it takes over your full monitor and then if you toggle it off it removes from the full monitor that's what it means and as you can see here you can also put different things on the full screen so your output is a program which will have set this to is normally there and when it, anytime you install vmix by default the full screen or the external monitor is on output but you can choose to put on the preview you can choose to put on the multi-view multi-view is when you're seeing the whole of the vmix operation system or you can put your output the big screen on any of your inputs that you've opened so if you've opened more inputs you're going to see all those inputs lined up as you go through it so that is that over there then you have your transitions all right, so these transitions are what you will use to move between 
your what do you call it inputs so once you have a preview here and now you want that to go to live you just choose any of these transitions based on your interest now the transitions some of them come with these arrows at the side to show that there are options to choose from and so as you can see there are a lot of other transitions including even stingers that you can use to do your transition then these numbers here simply refers to the duration of the transition whether you want it to be a long drawn out transition or a quick snappy one you can change it the, the it's in milliseconds so the first letter there the three is your the number of seconds that is going to be it must always be in thousands for you to get it the moment you cut it to hundreds it means that it is less than a second all right so that is that there the ftb is your fade to black so if you are ending a program or you are pausing a program or something and you just want to fade gently to black that's what you use fade to black and to just <coughs> send out a black screen to your viewers until you uh, undo it then to continue then you have this toggle bar is your um what do you call it joy bar that you use to you know for transition instead of using that you can also use this to do your transitions and it will equally work well for you okay so with that we've gone through the main parts here now if we move over to the extreme right top corner you have your inputs so pause inputs obviously means that all the inputs should stop functioning then basic here simply means that you are changing your layout to a basic layout and uh, i don't know why you want to do it but sometimes people get overwhelmed but there's nothing really overwhelming about vim it's a very very simple easy layout structure that i don't see anybody you but you have need of basic but if even this very simple layout overwhelms you you can toggle to basic and it will work for you then settings obviously you need to go through your settings to make sure you've customized your product to your taste so your display, how you want to display your feeling uh, of, of the feel of your display. This one is set to charcoal. That's how it came in as a, what do you call it, a preset. I never had any reason to change it. So I have been changed it. I have options of other charcoal or turning to blue. I, don't, I won't do that. Your preview colors, you can change them. And the, the preview is orange and the output is green. I'm okay with that. Some people choose to have output as red, but green is okay with me. I don't mind frame rate very important based on where you are broadcasting from or broadcasting to you want to know your frame rate i'm doing it in uk we use 25p in par so that is how i've set it to you can change it to anything at all film ntsc whatever so whatever you know all that your output size you have all the varieties here as well to choose from then your screen also size you can also choose to change i like this one because sometimes you bring in a video and it is in a smaller size you know any of these small sizes here the beauty of this one is that it can help you to stretch it so if you choose wide screen you can stretch it to fill the screen and make it have a feel of 90 20 10 80 size but then you must be careful it doesn't distort the image so if you stretch it an image is not distorted then you can use that to easily also work out the anamorphy gives you the letterbox approach or cut to your videos and media then you have your display so as you can see yeah, i'm using display one so that's why it's showing here i don't have a second display attached to it so i just use display um that's only one monitor attached to it i mean i have two displays but i'm using the main one then an external monitor and that is all that i i use here so the main one is display one the external monitor is display two and that is how it was so all these are just simple things for you to use uh preview size mine has been on automatic i've never had any reason to change it i like the sizes but if you want to change your sizes there it's you can always do that the same thing with your input size you can also change your sizes if you need to mine has been exactly the same size it came in i've never had any need to change it then you have your outputs uh one going to full screen the one going to the external all right so you have to set it which one you want to go or you want to broadcast your output screen with your program screen i want to broadcast your preview screen or input anything at all you want to send and it's up to you uh, but obviously i'll expect that you're broadcasting your output screens 
and you have all your overlays set and ready to in, uh, input as well if they need to go out then you have your options as to how you customize your screen the language and everything else this one is straightforward for you to do then performance also yep straightforward for you to do if you know your video works well then your decoders also if you know your video works well you choose and you set them and you use them recording this page is where you set your default recording and um, what you call the folder and when it comes it's going to open a folder automatically for you in your documents and it's going to name it the Phoenix story that's where it's going to save all your recordings you can change it if you need to so use your browse you change your folder then it saves it there then the format of saving your file is always going to save your file with a date attached to it and this is how the date is formatted if you don't like it you change it recording memory buffer is automatically set i think this is good i've not had any problems with it so i always keep it there as such automatically set up recording with previous settings in other words the last recording you did the name you give to the recording when it comes to the new one it's going to bring up the same name again if you want it to click uh, you keep it if you don't want it you won't do it it doesn't really make any difference by the end of the day every recording will have a new name anyway so you just go there and change it then interlaced recording is also enabled if you need it to use then you have your external output settings i mean this setup this vmix work is mainly for external output even it can be used for um, live i mean editing and other stuff as well but it's purely set up as a live streaming platform so you have to need know how to set up your external outputs so make sure that all these are set up the way it's supposed to be your 25 palette set up your output side and everything you know you have to make sure vmix video is enabled for streaming if you're going to stream and your vmix is not video is not enabled it is not going to stream you're not able to pick the feed so vmix video is what sends out the feed that other streaming platforms can uh, pick up then when it comes to your external renderer that is if you are using an external output means search as the deck link uh, output uh, options that are out there if you have any of it installed it will show so if you come here you have seen the device the external renderer i have deck link quad store so you can see it's giving me all my deck link options up to four of them so i can choose any of them i can choose any of these as my external output that will mean that through that particular external deck link i can connect that deck link to any screen anywhere and that will broadcast this uh, machine over there and so i have various means already i'm using my connection as in the vga to connect my main screen to a second monitor so i have already have one going on there i can equally using this external monitor renderer connect it through my deck link external output and pick under feed from there onto any screen anywhere using an sdi cable connected to any screen anywhere up to 50 to 100 meters away and it will still work there that's how fantastic this is and so even though it says it gives you one external output um with the, the the package i'm using i've I realized that i can still have multiple outputs you know is that flexible and is that good to use so yes you set up your device for external output once it's installed the vmx is very versatile you can pick up any video card you have in there and it will show it here all right the port is default and um, leave it there it is able to pick it up automatically so you don't need to change it but if for any reason you think it's not picking it up then obviously you can choose mine is sdi so that would have gone for sdi but based on what you have you just choose it uh, as your external output and it will go the sound here is also the sound of the computing machine and so it picks it up but you can also pick it up from any um, what do you call it sound input that um, sorry sound output that you would like to use so yes it can go through your deck link as well that is if your cables are sound enabled they can transmit those sounds for you as well yep then your audio inputs you set it up you know how to do that already audio output similar you go through it you set it up then the web this is the one one fantastic uh, tool where you are able to use it gives you a website address which is these numbers basically that you will use to be able to connect 
to this system and it will give you options for you know working remotely so that if you set up your machine to be working and you are probably in a different room but on the same wi-fi you could use your smartphone or your tablet to easily do transitions whilst you are there so you are having lunch in the, in the next room on the same wi-fi whilst you're having lunch and you know it's time to transition you can transition from there and it will transition for you and life goes on so that is how beautiful this is likewise you can use a computer to do so multiple cameras and tallies yep you have it here so you can use that shortcuts if you want to set, set up shortcuts on your system you can also set it up using this uh, keyboard shortcuts i don't use shortcuts a lot but here there you are then you have all this so all of these you know are your setup that you will need to work with um, play around with it get familiar with it then off you go so that brings us to the end of this side you have this question mark which obviously is your help um, thing so if you click on it it's going to bring out your help function that you can use to research more on what you need inside the help are uh, tutorials on every um, feature in youtube and how to use it just a youtube so every feature in vmix and how to use it so that is how it goes now inputs that is the lower um, extreme left corner you have your inputs there when you click on add input it's now going to give you the options of what you can bring in so you can bring in a video if saved on your system you can bring in a dvd from a dvd player you can do a video listing which we discussed earlier so video list is where you bring in multiple videos so you use your add function you go into a folder where you have a lot of videos you select them it will list all of them for you and you play them in the sequence of lists that you have set up and it's a very beautiful thing it goes for videos and you can also have it for audio listing as well so that you know you can easily play a whole list of you know album continuously without a break uh, using this list the same thing with the videos so if if you want to set up say five hour um, series of videos to show uh, during uh, afternoon sessions of your broadcast whilst you are out there doing something else listening is your feature then you have your camera inputs the camera inputs the one you use to bring in your camera feed so all these are camera cards i've installed on my machine and every card you install this vmix will pick it up that's how versatile it is extremely extremely good i used it my first time i had to use it and i needed to um i needed a software that i can move my vhs videos onto my digital platform and when i installed the software that came with the capture device which was a usb device you know i wanted a more robust platform than the one they supplied in their software to that what could set me researching i came across vmix and when i opened vmix automatically i saw the card there it has already picked up the card I'm like wow this is really cool it can pick up any video card at all and it will it will show it here and once you select it it's going to automatically find your input uh, mode you know it knows what it is it knows that deck link is you use SDI to find if it doesn't know and it picks the wrong one come in and choose the correct one once you choose the correct one once it will learn it next time when you come and select it it automatically choose the one you selected there's a resolution remember to choose the right one your frame rate remember to choose the frame rate that goes with your camera no keep this in mind this is a frame rate that goes with your camera i didn't know that when i came in after the frame rate i'm going to broadcast with and when I set up the frame rate and broadcast, which is 25, nothing was showing. And I was kept going around in circles wondering why is my camera not showing until I changed it to the frame rate of the camera. And then, bang, it was there. And that's how I've been using it since then till now. It's been extremely useful. And then, the video format is default. Keep it there. It will pick it up by itself. Audio format also. It will pick it up by default because it knows it's video capture too. And because my audio is coming through my camera, it picks it up straight from the camera feed as well and that's how versatile it is then your audio format if you have need of changing it but mine is cool so that's how i use it so basically you have these options of your videos 
um, which you can always choose to select and that is how you bring in your camera desktop capture that's a feature i'm using now to do this video recording so you can use that to capture any of your desktops whether this particular one the main desktop or any other connected desktop it will show you so once you choose this computer and you go to ok to give you options of the desktops that you have linked to display and I'll display two because I've added only two desktops then once you set the display you want you set up your sizes and everything you want to record then you go to ok then you are game if you continue with our inputs um, after desktop capture you have your streaming all right so this is the one you use to set up your stream as to whether it's going to go through udp or tcp or go to stream over other um, systems these ones you simply have to set it up based on your taste the particular website you are streaming to is set it up everything if you don't know how to set up these things based on the platform you are using if you go into the tutorials that i, I pointed out earlier in the extreme top right corner it will show you the kind of platforms that you could possibly use and how to use it if you still can't find any you can email martin directly and if, if he knows how that your how your platform can connect to bmx he will surely let you know he is that um, friendly all right then your instant replay system all right um, this one is available if only you have your uh, what do you call it if you have a higher grade of vmix i don't have a higher grade of vmix so this one hasn't really worked for me uh, but if you have a higher grade of vmix you have instant replay where it can replay your cameras for you so you set up your cameras you set up the number of times the length it should it should play and everything and it can easily do that for you then you have your image sequence stinger all right then you have your video delay if you need to do so you have your image input you have your photos input you have your powerpoint so all these are inputs when the end time you do any of these it will just open an input for you and input for you continuously until you have it you can even have color bars so that if you need to put a color bar on your screen um, at a point in transmission you have that one there as well you can bring in powerpoint and a powerpoint will play as a slide for you and you can um, customize the slides the speed and everything is there for you photos the difference between photos and images an image you bring in an image at a time photos will bring in a whole folder and you can play that folder even as a slideshow and to work perfectly for you audio is when you bring in an any recorded audio on your system and audio inputs when you're picking a direct audio live feed titles is when you are having to use any of your lower thirds all right we have the scoreboard here we have the timer we have the ticker which is the lower um, screen rolling you have a text to put in any text you need to then you have this one multi-view system that you use to bring in multiple screens there's a, a much more versatile one that we will go to later on but there's a preset one for you if you need to quickly get access to one this one will easily work for you without a problem at all all right then all of it listed here together the custom ones you see here these blue are my own um, ones i designed and yes vmix comes with um a designer software that you can use to design your own custom lower thirds and it's extremely versatile i've used it to design a lot of mine and it works beautifully yes yeah, so that is one of it in another video i will go through that so um flash whatever this one you use to bring in flash videos from another platform especially youtube and other platforms that plays flash video if you put in the correct uh, what do you call it url here it will bring the videos for instance it's one of ones i used recently um if you, you put it in there you could pull the video but obviously some of these videos on youtube are copyright protected among other things some of it youtube won't allow you to pull it but those that youtube allow you to pull it if you do so and you okay you know it will pull it out here for you then it will possibly play this one nothing is coming so it's possible that they've placed a limitation on it now so that it doesn't show but that is fine if you come to flash again let's see any old one i've used before uh, if it will show 
So YouTube is getting very smart now. It's able to sense it when you are playing the video on any platform apart from its own platform and it can limit you from doing that. But then there are a lot of other videos that you can use. It, it, it's, it's usually because of the one broadcasting. If the one broadcasting doesn't have any problem with you playing their video anywhere and you pull it, it will come. If the owner of the video says no, YouTube also plays limitations on where it won't come. But that is how. Okay, sorry, I just realized that I went off audio for a while and that would mean I have to show you something quickly which could help in ensuring that I never go off audio again and um, it's one of the features that you have in the system here. So basically you've gone through this one. Virtual set is when you have the inbuilt sets that you can use to, you know, do your broadcast and you have if you know how to use a green screen yep then you can use these first four for green screening then the others are also cool ones that you can also use for your broadcasting so that is how it goes um all right so i will close this one here then i think this video has gone on for over 30 minutes which is quite long so we're going to end it here and we'll have to produce a second video as I believe you know that these videos are better when they are short and straightforward. So we'll produce a second video which will now take us through the settings of each input and how you can customize it and make it work for you. But as you can see, it's quite a straightforward system and you can use it as well. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like and share. Thank you.